Welcome back to Minecraft. More IC2 today with Malinka, Demon, and me, Bioweaver. Hello. Hello. Okay, so, uh, yeah, last episode, what did we say? We had the Metal Former, a Macerator, an Electric Furnace, an Extractor. Um, so, let's increase our machines. Um, now, we've got power at the moment that's coming through, but isn't being stored. So, my job at the moment is to make a CESU. Um, Link, what are you going to be making? I'll be making LV transformers so we don't blow up our machines with too much power. Cool. And uh, what are you working on, Demon? I'll be making a compressor. Okay, cool. What will Sounds you be good. compressing? Everything. Ooh. You're making uh, WinZip? 7-Zip? Yes I, am. yes, I am. So it looks like I need some lead dust, so I'm actually just requesting some lead, um, and I'll just macerate it in the machine behind me. Um, we should have some sulfur already in the system. Yeah. Um, I'll use the one we've got most of. Um, just request one. Quite often, you when you uh, shift click recipes into uh, this it actually picks out the wrong one and then won't request it it's uh, I believe there's a way around it um, by using uh, modules that have like ore dictionary kind of modules but um, this is I've got mostly railcraft based software so what I can do is just switch it out by clicking like this it usually works quite well um, so oh, you beat me to it <laughs> Uh, where's the macerator? This one. I do like the fact that Whaler on the top of the screen shows uh, quite a lot of information about the power storage and uh, in each machine. Um, it also shows that max power we were talking about, and that's why we need the LV transformer. Uh, the CSU has an output of 128. That's a bit much for us. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. I think it. it I don't think it blows up machines which is what I said last time, but there's a possibility it will, so just in case. Um, yeah, we don't want to take the chance. Exactly. Um, so, let's get... It's going to take quite a long time. Mass rate is fairly slow until we overclock this stuff, but we can't really overclock it until we've got like a decent power outage. So um, Now, uh, if I just... I can drop that sulfur in. If I drop this lead dust back in, and I think I've already put cables back in the system, so if I, I should be able to request. So the CESU requires three advanced batteries. Um, I, at the moment, I've only got enough stuff for two, I think. Oh, it says it's still missing the, the dust. It's still trying to wing its way through the system, probably, trying to find a chest. I've got an LV transformer going. So let's go hook that up somewhere. Maybe. Yeah, let's hook it up here. Where's my. If you want fire, we got the compressor up and ready. Okay, cool. Um, let me just uh, make a couple of these. It shouldn't take me long. And. Apparently still missing the the one lead dust I've only just put back in there. So it's uh, two batteries made. And um, while I'm waiting for that lead dust, uh, Demon, sorry, what did you just make the compressor? This block right here. Excellent. Um, well, I think what we're going to need is some uh, advanced alloys. So I think, is it uh, coal? You might want to request some coal out the system. If we're lucky, we've got some coal dust already made. Oh, look at that, we do. Pulverized coal. I think it works oh, in your nice. ore dictionary to um, the same way. I'll just uh, grab this coal dust now. I'm actually tempted to, to make a second metal former, to be honest. Uh, it's Yeah, that could work. I'm just waiting for the materials to come through. We'll need it anyways. Yeah, so that's why. Besides, we're all fans of metal here. Uh, are we? Heavy metal. <laughs> um. So yeah, if I take um pulverized coal or coal dust, 
in a, uh, a circle of four, I get raw carbon fiber. Two carbon fibers side by side makes raw carbon mesh. And this is why we need a compressor, is if we put the raw carbon mesh in the compressor, it will, um, well, we'll show when it's done. It's a, I believe it's the, um, I can't even think of the name. Well, screw it. I'll know it when it's done. <laughs> I'm just being derpy. Um, okay. So where was I with the CESU? Uh, I... Carbon plate. Carbon plate, thank you. Um, so we need some bronze plates now. I'm not sure I've uh, got bronze plates. I'll check, but... Um... It's missing the bronze plates. Okay, so that's fine. Um, if I switch the recipe here for these empty ones um, and just place the batteries in here like so, then that will work. Uh, meanwhile, I'll take these bronze ingots that I've got here and in the metal former, hopefully no one's using it. Oh, they are. Well... Sorry. Um... Um, I've got some iron plates in uh, in mind, so just steal mine. Will do. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll take the bronze here and uh, turn those into bronze plates. And you can see here that the uh, compressor... Oh, you took the materials out. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I threw one to you. Okay, well, it's about to finish anyway, but yeah, that makes uh, the carbon plates here, so that's fine. Uh, you're going to need them anyway. Um, now that you've made that one, Demon, do you want to make the induction furnace? Sure. Okay. And, oh yeah, I was waiting for the metal former. Right now everything's like really slow because of the lack of power coming through... Um, the machines, or lack of overclockers actually, but that's something that we'll try and solve as quickly as we can. Maybe this episode, maybe next. We'll see how we get on. Hmm. So yeah, at the moment it's still waiting for the bronze plates to hit the hit a chest somewhere, which should be... Um, right now it's just a default chest over in the palace. What I'm wondering is, do these uh, have auto eject by now, or is it still that you need to extract it yourself? Um, you need to extract it yourself. Not necessarily. These now have something called an ejector upgrade that you can add in, and using the ejector upgrade, it will auto eject. Although you have to tell it which side to auto eject from. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. So, guess we'll be making uh, lots of those then. Have you got the um, the transformer? Transformer's already hanging downstairs. If you check. Okay. Um, so with the transformer, uh, I think we've probably explained this before. But the one with the, the side with the most dots is where you put the high power in, and the one with the least amount of dots is where you put the low power in. So just so that we don't mess up any machines. I believe I have to disconnect this cable here, Malinka? Yeah, just to be on the safe side. Okay. There you go. And now we can hang, uh, hang in uh, the bad box, or CSU. Yep, CSU. Um, so now there's no power going up there for the moment. And um, for the CSU, it has uh, one output and five inputs. So what I'm going to... Um, do is if I place this upside down at the moment is um, the pa power will start running into um, this machine as it stands but the output right now is going downwards however we need it to go upwards into the transformer uh, the transform by the way is going to take because um, this machine outputs 128 and we want it to drop down to 32 we need to get it through the LV transformer here um, to drop it down that step um, but anyway, the moment the output is facing down, we want it to face it up. So if I shift, uh, uh, shift left click, is it? Or shift right click? Yeah, shift right click. Yep, it's working again. Um, that sends the power upwards, straight up. So that's, uh, 
what I'm doing there and you can see there's the power in the CSU storing power um, the LV transformer here we've got um, redstone equals step up which means if it had a redstone signal it would step up the power we actually want it to always always no matter what happens step down so I'm going to switch the LV transformer to a fixed step down and that will step down the power now that way if for any reason you have to put lever or redstone signal in your automation upstairs you don't accidentally blow up your machines um, so that's always good to uh, remember to do that that's all working nicely cool alright if you've got any other machines ready to go on the line yet or I've nearly got another uh and here's another middle former. Okay, and you're going to set that directly to. Um, uh, if we'll keep one. Shall we move to compressor? Um, In a second. Yeah, swap the mm -hmm. uh, compressor and the metal former over, I guess. Someone made a tin cable and hooked it up down here instead of a copper cable. Just noticing. Oh, that might have been me. Alright, just so we don't have any confusion, um, I'm just going to swap out the tin for copper. I've got the cables on me. Oh. I, I believe a tin cable is worse than copper and is only 32 EU per tick. Not that it would have mattered because we were running 32 EU per tick down the line at the moment, but uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, remember, if you break any of these machines with a, uh, a pickaxe and force pick them up, then you could potentially have issues. Um, I'll leave this one on hammer mode. And that one, that on, one extruding. on extruding. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's working quite nicely. The power's being generated there. Um, oh, I noticed this wrench actually has a damage value. The uh, IC2 wrench. Unfortunately. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, swap them out for electric ones soon. Um, Demon, uh, how are you getting on with uh, yours? I am just needing to make uh, the advanced machine block, and then I'll be able to make it. Okay, so part of the recipe for that is a mixed metal ingot, which actually has changed. Instead of just um, using... Well, refined iron is gone, actually. There's no more refined iron in in uh, IC2 so instead you've got iron plates on the top bronze plates in the middle and tin plates on the on the bottom um, so instead of it being ingots it's now plates so I believe you were using the formers weren't you to make your plates for those yes I was okay um, we've got a visitor do we? we do was it a mage he's checking to see what we got um, it's odd because it doesn't seem to work very well, um, but I actually have this spell here, and that's charm, charm, which means if I think if I got into combat, he would heal me while uh, the buff is on. So yeah, nice. actually, we could try it. I could punch you. It's technically considered a, a act of violence. Uh, okay, go on then, punch me. Uh, okay, well apparently he doesn't give a crap. <laughs> I think Demon's having too much fun. <laughs> oh well. It's not. Um, <laughs> it might be because I haven't picked up the the mage posse talent yet, that's probably why. Okay. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, uh, what else is it that I needed? I was going to look up a recipe for overclockers. Um, yeah, they're basically the same as uh, as they used to be. Except to make coolant cells, I believe um, we're going to have a yeah, bit Yeah, you need plates uh, now. That's all. Yeah, tin plates. Oh, apparently you can use all sorts of things. I wonder how um, uh, water cells, these ones. How do you make empty cells now? I believe you use the tin. Um, oh, in a metal form. The tin. Yeah. Uh, let's make some of those. Um, 
Let me grab some tin. Um, I know you working with some tin anyway, but I don't want to mess with your recipes. Um, I'll just grab a fresh lot. Oh, a tin plate in the extruder, uh, metal, extruding metal former, and you'll get empty cells. Interesting. Yeah, so basically you, t um, you hammer out some uh, tin plates and then you extrude the plates into cells. Um, did that tin ever arrive that I requested? There it is, uh, top left. Eh? Top left of where? Your crafting bench. Oh yeah. Wow. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, we need to turn it into plates. So, did somebody want to remove our furnace so I can stick the induction furnace in its place? You've got an induction furnace already. Yeah, that's what I was yes. going to make. Yeah, um, ah. just uh, the that needs to go. Um, um, we oh, may yeah, have need to a new line because it's a different power level. Yeah, um, I guess it could work. Right yeah. here. Eventually, we'll be making all of these take 128 EU per tick with a transformer upgrade. But for right now, uh, we'll just move that machine over over to here separate. So the idea of that is that we are potentially, we've got 128 EU being outputted here. We're going to have to move, juggle this around, actually, so that we can um, yeah, I noticed. take power out of the CESU before it hits the LV transformer. I'll take care of that. Yeah. So we'll have to... Um, um, yeah, just... Mm. I'll, leave, I'll leave it to you. It's going to require a bit of juggling. Uh. Oh, I see what you're going to do. Okay, so that powers that line, and then you'll take another bunch of cables and power it up. Over here. Okay. Exactly. I are smart. I see. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, I've managed to get three empty cells. Um, and I need an infinite water source. Have we got one nearby? Um, infinite water source closest by is the temple. Actually, there's one over here. So I'm just going to fill these up, and that gives me free water cells. I mean, you can do it with buckets or whatever. I just wanted to show the water cells. Wow, wrenches take a lot of damage. Oh well. Um, and then, if I take, I've got some extra tin plates here. If I remember correctly, it was uh, the water cells surrounded by uh, tin plates. Which makes uh, yes. coolant, 10k coolant cells. So now I've got, uh, well, not enough. Is there more tin in, uh, plates in here? Yeah, there is. So if I request three, that would be good. Right, what else do we need for this overclocker? Two copper cables and electronic circuit. We've got that. We got some spare copper cables. Yep. Yeah, my uh, bench has a couple. Uh, well, there's some in the system too, so. I'll just grab those. Um, so there's my extra coolant cell that I need. And uh, let's shift click this recipe in. And the copper cables should show up out the system. I've already requested them. There we go. And there's an overclocker upgrade. It's just the one at the moment. Which machine do we want to put our overclocker in? Hammer time. You think that's the Yeah, we'll be one? needing it a lot there. 
Yep. Uh, fun fact, if we put a uh, upgrade in there, it'll eat more power. But we've got this on a 32 power network. So what you usually do is you put in a couple of overclockers, so the power uh, usage increases. And then you use another upgrade called a uh, transformer, transformer upgrade, so it can handle higher power. Right, but I'm going to show very quickly how it works in terms of um, here. If you look at Metalformer here, current usage of power is 10 EU per tick. If I add an overclocker upgrade, like so, and then hover over it, this machine now uses 16 EU per tick as, uh, as its thing. So we know that we're not hitting our max power. Yep. So now it will run just a, a tiny bit quicker it was not a lot you can stack overclocker upgrades on top of one another but you know it's better so that's a good sign usually you stack about four um, so the induction furnace um, if you um, oh this one doesn't have all the, the whaler stuff here to tell you the machine of the uh, Oh, good usage point. of the induction furnace. My guess is there's a good reason for it. The um, the induction furnace. It says power one EU per tick, and that's um, if I. W but it doesn't quite work out that way. Um, so if I put say some uh, something to be cooked. Um, I'm grabbing a stack of cobble to show. Oh, okay, cool. Um, if you uh, just chuck it at me, that'd be useful. That works. Here you go, so. Thanks. So, when you put in, say, just one cobblestone, oh, someone's getting ahead of themselves. Right. <laughs> right, so I'll leave that to cool down again now. Right, so, yeah, it stops at 1% uh, or 0%. And actually, if I was to chuck a piece of cobble in here, then um, it will heat up as a, and cook at the same time really really slowly but when it first goes in it really is only using one EU per tick but as it heats up it uses more and more power um, up to um, I think a maximum of 128 EU per tick if it was running and turned on um, now if you want to keep it turned on you can use a lever although if it's not actually cooking something it, it actually doesn't use the full 128 EU I can't remember what it does drain but it does have like a bit of drain on there if uh, you leave it on all the time. I just don't know mm -hmm. the, the I numbers. think it drops I to like 3 EU. EU. Well, that's the old yeah, IC2. Yeah, quite neg negligible. But um, I don't know if the new one is. But as you can see, as the heat climbs here, um, well, one of the good things, you can cook two things at once, but see, it's already getting faster. And... Eventually, One little it fun fact as well. Instant. It does not have upgrade slots. For example, the extractor upgrade will not work on the indu induction furnace. Um, I think it might um, extract out of this box automatically, out of the, the right hand side ones. I think it's already set up with auto extracts on these. Want to check? I'll get a, uh, I'll get a chest. Um. Yeah, go for it. I'm not, I'm not entirely yep. sure, but me neither. But it's a fun to a test. Uh, either way, I don't we think can it does be items because it would anyway. automatically defeat the machines next to it, and that's not something uh, that mod makers want without any control over it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're probably right. It probably doesn't. Well, throwing some cobble, I'd say. You can see as it heats up already, and it's not. And yeah, you're right, it wouldn't. Uh, but either way, you can put an item duck on, uh, ducked on the side and drag it out that way. It's not the end of the world. Not a big deal indeed. Um, right, any other machines that we wanted to make on this line? We've got some of the best stuff here. We've got the compressor, metal former. Um, there's... Uh, if I just type in industrial... So there's a few new machines that are actually good for increasing ore generation. So normally if you use a macerator, you can double your output of ores, right? So you put in, say, iron ore, macerate it into two dust, um, and then um, you cook it and you double your ores. Now, you can actually go further than that now with IC2. 
So, uh, from what I remember, you need to um, see if I can find the names. Uh, you need a thermal centrifuge as part of the process and an oil washing plant. So, uh, the thermal centrifuge basically takes, I think, the dust and spins them out, and you get a f occasionally an extra material out of it of some kind. Then you take that material. Um, wash it in your washing plant and then cook it and then you, you're pretty close to tripling your oars. Just having a look at the potential recipe for doing it now. It might be a bit much because we'll need to go through those and uh, what was the other? Uh, a mining laser which requires advanced circuits and Lapatron crystals and things like that. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to close this episode off just yet but I think I have something for you. Okay. Oh, excellent. An electric wrench. Um, I'll show you that very quickly right now. Um, the electric wrench works just like a normal wrench, um, but instead of it having a durability, it has um, electric power on it. So if I just right-click on the CESU here and place my wrench inside, it will actually um, power up the wrench. Now... Um, Anyone remember how to switch modes on the wrench? What button it is? <laughs> uh, yes, you have to sh shift. I know that part of it. Sh well, oh, it's not that button. Try shift G. Shift yeah, G. It's different than each mod pack, uh, but I think you can find it in your button config somewhere. Alright, let me go looking through my button config. Um, I believe it'd be under Turning the off, mode uh, switch. The induction furnace, by the way. Well, no sense in eating all that power. Um, unfortunately, set up on the same button is my map button. So let me switch it. Um, M. Yeah. So I don't know. Apostrophe. That'll do. Um. Um. No, that's not working either. Is it shift apostrophe? I don't know. I'll look it up and in a minute I'll possibly show you. Uh, now I'm going to come off camera and I'm going to make um, those two machines off camera. So one metal former, uh, sorry, not metal former, one thermal centrifuge, which is going to require those uh, machine casings and um, the. Um, if I get to it, uh, energy crystals, which is energium dust. Energium dust is diamond dust, so it's going to require macerating some diamond and adding that to redstone. Uh, anything else that stands out as being a bit difficult to make here? Oh, that's the usual recipe. That's not too bad. All washing plant just requires some uh, electric motors. So I'm going to do those off camera because it will take forever otherwise. So we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so we did set up two machines here. We've got the uh, oil washing plant. Uh, we've got uh, water being supplied to it. And um, as uh, we showed, was it last episode, I think, um, we put a liquid su uh, fluid supplier here um, set to uh, get my wrench. Set to keep, I put four buckets worth actually in here, so there'll always be four buckets worth of liquid um, in the machine um, at all times, which is good. So it'll just keep adding more and more buckets of water to this uh, washing plant from the water supply that we showed previously. So yeah, that's your washing plant. Um, then we've got a thermal centrifuge um, that we're keeping heated up at the moment just because it's, it's a machine that takes a really long time to heat up otherwise. Um, so we've got a lever done, so very similar to the induction furnace, you have the thermal centrifuge. And again, it requires, as a base thing, it requires 48 EU and has a maximum power of 128. So we've put it on our second line here, the one that takes the higher power. Um, so yeah, let's show it in action, shall we? Um, okay. Uh, Malinka, do you want to uh, explain the steps, actually, if you uh, grab the... Um, oh, iron sure. ore. I'll grab one uh, iron ore to show it off. Yeah. 
It's quite a, well, extensive process. We'll start with the macerator. It still does the same as you're used to uh, from the old days. It'll take one ore and turn it into uh, dust. Uh, but well, you don't get straight iron dust anymore these days. You get a different type of dust. Should appear any moment at the macerator. Indeed. We desperately need to overclock these machines. Out. <laughs> I'm working on that right now. Now, now we get crushed iron ore instead of just iron dust. Uh, we'll take that and go to the next machine in the line. Well, virtual line. We'll go to the ore washing machine. Throw it in. Now let's see what that does for us. Uh, yes, the machine is working. If you look at the blue arrows, it's slowly filling up. Very slowly. <laughs> Your washing plant can do some more advanced stuff as well, which we'll be showing later on when we uh, get that far. But, but for now, we're just showing the basic or washing plant use. Um, so, and each time you so wash from two iron, yeah, go on, from an iron dust, we get the purified crushed iron ore. Tiny piles of iron dust and some stone dust. So well, let's uh, wait for the second one to finish, and I'll grab it all out. Yeah, the uh, tiny piles. Uh, tiny of piles. Iron. Go on. I'll shut up. Uh, <laughs> go right ahead, fire. No, no, no! You're doing really well. <laughs> Carry on. I should butt out. Uh, okay. The tiny piles are of uh, iron dust are basically the same as you're used to from older versions. Get nine of them in a crafting grid, and you'll get one uh, iron dust. Who's picking up stone? Anyone dust who's here? worked with, with bees before? You'll see, uh, you should have seen them. Well, let's go to the next machine, the thermal centrifuge. This one eats power like it's, uh, well, like it's candy. We'll start with the purified crust ore. Uh, first, it'll bu build up heat, but we've been doing that with the lever already, and then it'll start using that heat uh, to do something with the iron uh, ore. In this case, spin it right round, baby, right Ma round, right round. Yeah, that's one way to describe it. I was looking for a more technical term, but I like your description better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, this time uh, we don't get some stone dust. Oh well. I think sometimes probably we got it from the oil washing chance. machine. Well, yeah, we did. <clears throat> yeah, we definitely got got it from that. So here now we get our final iron dust, um, and some gold dust, and a little bit of gold dust. Yeah. So yeah, this is a way of uh, you know potentially it's not always increasing the ores because sometimes it, it increases it, sometimes it doesn't. But if you process it, you'll get a lot more ore than using the method that we're using in thermal expansion. And with this, you also uh, although it comes as tiny piles, no joke. Um, you get some gold. Yeah, I've taken the iron dust and thrown gold. it into the uh, induction furnace. Oh okay. Um, yeah, so that we can cook it for its final step and get some iron ore. Um, the stone dust, I believe you can cook it up and just turn it into stone, I think. But um, we uh, actually Nope, I don't think so actually. Um, let me just I looked up stone dust and I think the only thing it's used for is uh, construction foam. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, uh, it's used in con yeah, construction foam. Which, again, the CF powder, we'll definitely be using it. It's yep. So we'll uh, we'll look out where demon uh, is logging out, and once he gets back, he'll be uh, well completely packed in construction foam, <laughs> something like that. I think what we're going to have to do is um, take some of our raw ores that that are coming in from our um, our bore from uh, in the other world, and um, actually just process them here instead of in the thermal expansion room, just for a little while. Just so that we can get some stone dust storage, because we're going to need. I'll take this uh, CF stack of iron then and get it going. Macerator, go. Yep. So yeah, that's how to increase your ores the new IC2 way, and uh, yeah, it is a lengthy process. Each of the machines does take a long time to build. Just you know. You have to be prepared for that. However, all of these machines can be automated and, you know, you could just leave it running on its own and it should be fine once you've automated them. Uh, this line here is an unautomated version. Um, we will probably, at some point, and off camera, um, build an automated version on, uh, downstairs. Um, at the very least... But not before we've got some real power going. <laughs> yeah, at the very least, we'll probably set up these metal formers so that we can just request them um, 
all the stuff in the request table just set up some crafting pipes again that will come much later we've got still got uh, quite a few systems that we want to show off on on camera beforehand uh, I think bees are coming up ish soon um, with that in mind um, there is one thing I was going to say about um, or what actually one thing I'll say this has actually been here for a couple of episodes but I forgot to mention it is uh, upstairs here was always supposed to be liquid storage and I finally got off my big fat ass and actually stored our liquid so we've got our liquid XP in here we've got ethanol in this one lava in this one and um, this will be biomass once we get some extra of that and any liquids in future will be stored in tanks so that this whole room will be a a tank room um, with that being said we've got quite a lot of systems that we want to do off camera which is um, Fire, you could show uh, how the XP room looks uh, in the tower now you cleaned it up quite nicely oh that's true I can do that uh, while I'm running over there and I'm gonna run the slow way just so I can talk at the same time um, <laughs> that's actually quite an achievement already doing two things at the same time well I know um, but yeah we've got quite a lot of off-camera work to do I've got um, a whole B setup which you can see there's like this big glass building going up um, there's gonna be a lot of design work going into our B room um, again this season a bit like our first season where I put quite a lot of design work into the B room um, that's going to take a really long time to set up. Um, we're probably going to do some automating of IC2 off camera as well. And all of that means that um, we're going to be fairly busy. And I'm not saying definite, but it's possible that after this particular episode, um, we'll be taking a few days break from normal. So you might see like a week without videos just so that we've got the time ourselves to build some of these extra big big things because yeah there's so much like, off camera work that we need to do right now that I think we need like a short break in between videos to accomplish everything so I just thought I'd put that out there oh crap we did actually manage to backfill our essence already I only just changed that this morning because this room was filled with ores um, all right, anyway, so yeah, just bear that in mind that there'll be a short break in between. So that's fine. Um, yeah, I redesigned. I didn't like the ceiling being as it was. I found it was a bit more ugly than I'd like. So I, I basically circled the uh, room here in the uh, liquid XP tanks. Does that thought it looked cooler? It does. Um, and yeah, I've had to rewire everything just so that we've got that big storage of XP in there. And there's more XP here than we'll ever use to the point that um, I need to actually go around to these activators and turn them off because it's out of control right now. <laughs> well, we could wire it up later with some uh, redstone cabling and such and have a master switch or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I was thinking I could do it tomorrow morning, but it appears that, like... I'm going to have to do it now to turn it off. So, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Um, next job. <laughs> yeah, it's our next job. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I'll be doing it off camera. Don't worry. Um, but thanks for joining us for this episode of IC2. As I say, there'll be a short break. We'll probably come back um, and we'll probably go straight into Nuke's next episode in just over a week's time. And then uh, probably... I'll show you the automation of bees. I'm not going to show you how to bead bees. You can look that up yourself in either in a past series that we've recorded or elsewhere if you really wish. But we'll show you how we're planning on automating bees. Um, so that will come up soon. Uh, anything else that you thinking is coming up soon, Demon Linker? The sun. It's no, night uh, at, at least at the moment. Um, what did you say, Demon? Nothing that I know of. Well, you know of? Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, there's one little thing. Besides bee, uh, bee breeding, we'll be doing another type of breeding as well. That's Not true. sure when exactly. That will come straight after, I think, other, um, just because that's the reason we're bee breeding, actually. I don't give a poo about bees this time around that much. I might use a little bit, but actually it's something that happens as a side thing of bee breeding that we really want to get into. 
Um, we delayed it because of uh, waiting for Binny's mods, which is now in the pack, which is great. Um, yeah. There was oh happy dance. There's a, a Steve Cart build that is coming up as well. That's to do with RB room. Oh yeah. So that's oh yes coming up soon. Um, and then we've at some point in the series, I don't know when, but at some point. Um, oh. What else we got? Oh, we've got a villager breeding system. That's coming up. Oh, yes. And uh, we've got a very to cool look uh, for that. Yeah, and I'm totally extending this video for no good reason. But anyway, if some people might be interested. So we've got... <laughs> <laughs> he likes to talk. I know. So we've got a village breeding system. There's one other thing I was uh, going to do. Oh, yeah. We're going to do Tink Alley, uh, Tink Ant Alley Mark II in here, which is like a, a, a an advanced version of Tink Ant Alley. And you, if you thought the last one was fairly advanced, uh, we've got plans for a way more advanced version of Tin Can Alley um, that we're going to do. But um, that's probably much, much later in the series. But it's it's in the works. Um, part of the uh, build is, that's required for Tin Can Alley Mark Two is that this city, which isn't much of a city right now, it's more of a village. But yeah, once this is more of a city of some kind, then that's when we can do our Tin Can Alley Mark II, um, because it's going to be um, done all over the city, basically. But I'll explain it when we get to it. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Uh, if you really want to watch me rant, you can watch the latest episode of Co Couch when it comes out. Um, then <laughs> <laughs> I'll rant to your heart's content. Anyway, I think let's wrap up now. Um, <laughs> yep. Thank you, Malinka. Thank you, Demon. See you next time, everyone. You're welcome. Bye. See you Bye. Next time. We might actually finish the tower next time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye. <laughs>